What is your heart's deepest desire? Psalm 20 will help you to thread your way through the various levels of desires until you reach the bedrock bottom of your soul, where your deepest desire resides. Welcome to Psalms at Midweek. I'm Nick Connolly, pastor of the Matawan United Methodist Church in Aberdeen, New Jersey, welcoming you to this psalm, which completes a three-year series of 150 psalms. You can access any psalm by going to the church's YouTube channel and selecting the playlist, Psalms at Midweek. If you have liked these, and if you would like to support what we're doing here in this particular psalm meditation series, just swing down and make a like, and maybe you'll make a comment and share it with somebody that you feel would benefit from this meditation. This is a wonderful time of the year. It's springtime, it's the Easter season. It's just two days before Ascension Thursday, <clears throat> and the completion of God's plan in the ascending of the Lord to take his place at the Father's right hand, as is the image in the book of Acts. This is a time of celebration in which the powerful, loving residence of God in the heavens and yet still connecting with earth. The highest heavens and the bottom of your soul thread their way through the Holy Spirit that's coming. So let's begin with some quiet time of meditation to orient your physical body and your spirit to be attentive, not only to what I'm saying, but what the spirit is saying to your soul. So relax. Feel a sense of balance. Take a position in which your, your torso is upright, in which your feet are on the floor, or whatever posture you have, relax and sink into the here and now. As we take a half a minute of simple silence to prepare for this time of meditation. We come to the fire starter, this one minute orienting message, which is like the spirit blowing across your soul so that what's coming in the scripture passage will be enhanced, hopefully, by these words. It's entitled, All You Need. A series of loving blessings flow from the heart of the psalmist. He is an intercessor for you. The Holy Spirit groans inwardly to set you free and brings the gift of God's helping presence to you. What are the circumstances in your life that come to mind that concretely unfold for you just how and where you need help from the Lord? The same power that raised Jesus from the dead is available to you. Take verse 7 and treasure it. The power of Jesus' name has been given to you. He stands before you now as the risen Lord. See the smile and feel the arms of Christ who embraces and protects you. And now we pray together Psalm 20, entitled to the leader, a Psalm of David in the deepest tradition of this person, king, religious leader, 
dancer, songwriter, psalmist, whom the Lord knew because he knew his heart. Despite some pretty grave sinfulness, still the Lord knew his heart. You know the Lord knows your heart, knows your heart and its deepest desire. The Lord answer you in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob protect you. May send you help from the sanctuary and give you support from Zion. May he remember all your offerings and regard with favor your burnt sacrifices. May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill all your plans. May we shout for joy over your victory, and in the name of our God, set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. Now I know that the Lord will help his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with mighty victories by his right hand. Some take pride in chariots and some in horses. But our pride is in the name of the Lord our God. They will collapse and fall, but we shall rise and stand upright. Give victory to the King, O Lord. Answer us when we call. Notice that in verse 4, may he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill all your plans. If your plans are synchronized with the Lord's plans and vision for you, that synchronization will make it possible for you to be touching God's desire for you and your deepest desire for yourself. All your plans. So often in life we can get planning for this and for that. My dad used to use the expression, man proposes, God disposes. You might look back over the main decisions and plans for your life. Perhaps you have some regrets. Perhaps you wish you did something else. Perhaps it doesn't matter because in this present moment, the Lord's going to fulfill. This is the best moment of your life right now, is the here and now. It matters not what brought you to this moment. And it's in this instant that the Lord is going to fulfill your highest and deepest desires. I say highest because we use images of height and low and so on, and the Lord is up in heaven, but heaven and your soul are connected through the power and the gift of the Holy Spirit. The ascension means the completion and the reigning of Jesus next to the Father, as the image is put, so that God's presence and will overflowing across the world and overflowing in your own soul is what's bringing you your deepest desires. It says in verse 6, He will answer from his holy heaven with mighty victories by his right hand. The Lord is always victorious. This Thursday, when we celebrate Ascension Thursday, begins a nine-day period of preparation for the homing of the Holy Spirit a week from the following Sunday. Nine days. The original novena, that's what the word novena means. It means nine. So take those days in special preparation so that you'll be readying your spirit and your soul to receive the great gift of the Holy Spirit on that special day on Pentecost. It's the coming of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has already come, but we can always wait in a timely way for that fullness to come ever more fully in your own heart. I'd like to share with you a quote from James L. May's work on the Psalms called Interpretation in this Interpretation. As scripture, the psalm teaches the church to pray for those who hold the power of office because they, like us, 
are dependent on the Lord. It warns against ever letting our dependence on their service turn into the trust we owe to God alone. It warns against allowing their fascination with military strength to make us support policies based on trust in military might. Every ruler of the earth needs to acknowledge the direction of the spirit of love, of peace, of reconciliation in all those who belong to the particular country of which they're ruler. It doesn't really been, it's not really been happening that way in so many ways. That's why we need to pray for rulers, pray for them, that they might experience this wider sense of who they are and the call God has placed upon their life to be ruler of the people, but subject to the ultimate rulership and dominion of God, who is loving kindness, who is a servant, who wants to give uh, energy and peace to the people of every single country. As we begin to close, I'd like to pray that we would all be open to God's Holy Spirit. So Lord, I pray that this prayer, this meditation, this psalm, which adheres to your deepest longing for the earth and the peoples of the earth that you have created, that we would subject ourselves to you and be open to the deepest desires of your heart for every single human being, especially the ones that are praying this psalm right now. You are the Lord of our life. We praise you and we thank you for the gift of life. God be with you. May these days of preparation for the coming of the Holy Spirit, celebrating that in a special way of Pentecost, may these days be prayerful, open, resilient for you. A beautiful child of God. God bless you. I send my love and blessing always.